everyone, and welcome to Mastering Music with Matthew. I am so excited to be having part two of our awesome discussion about some changes to the music industry. With me again, I have a panel. Rashad from the Hot Minute Funk Band. I have Jennifer Valiquette, woodwind player. I have Sarah Olson, singer, songwriter, and musician artist. And we have the founder and CEO of Bucket.com. We got a way to monetize your social media. Go to Bucket.com and you can find out more changes that are happening in the music industry, specifically Spotify. How are you guys all doing? Great. Oh, good here. Yeah, good here. <laughs> so how many of you guys have music on Spotify? <laughs> I definitely do. Okay, well, th it's three out of five of us. Okay. So, um, did you guys know it's to you. make money on Spotify, crediting Redacted Tonight for this work, the Harvard Business Review says that on, on Spotify, artists need 3.5 million streams per year to achieve the annual earnings for a full-time minimum wage worker of 15000 yeah. Eighty dollars. Okay, that's a lot. <laughs> uh, yeah. This is the big time people. Yeah. What do you guys think about these numbers here? I definitely knew that it was something like really similar to to this because um, I think last year I made around seventeen thousand plays streams, and it was like I don't have much more than a hundred dollars on my bank over that, and it's. It's with Apple Music, so. Mm -hmm. You know, I've taken Spotify and I put it in a different place in my mind instead of thinking about it as from this particular perspective because, yes, it's a streaming platform, but if I think about what Spotify really does, I think about them more as like a weird promotion company where they focus so much on their Spotify playlists because if you put one of your songs in their playlist, the album art still has a Spotify logo on it. So really, you're just kind of contributing to their creative goals, but in return, they pay you the absolute minimum that they legally have to. But I think about it more as like a promotion company because if you get your song onto the playlist, that exposes you to a larger audience, and that's exactly what a promoter does. So I think about it like, especially with their new <laughs> payola that they're rolling out, they're offering people less money for more plays. And so for, for me, in my perspective, I've kind of forfeited uh, Spotify revenue as the only source of income or a primary source of income and just be like, hey, keep the money, give me more fans, give me more plays, let more people hear my music so then I can find another way to rope them in, whether it's through a merch mm -hmm. page or, you know, ticket sales or whatever mm -hmm. it may be. But um, it's very obvious that, you know, Spotify is not going to be paying living wage wages to people. And so mm -hmm. I just kind of see it as like playing their game instead of it trying to ch get them to change and conform to what we want as musicians is more money, but they're, they're on a totally different uh, ball game. So, yeah, so, so moving on to what, what you're saying, continuing the story, um, there was a, a, one of the main unions, I think it's a global union, and it was a musicians and um, performers union, a very powerful, I don't remember the name of it off the top of my head, very powerful global union, and they were going after Spotify. And they're saying, you know, give higher percentage royalties to the artist. For example, if Drake is getting 2%, like or don't like Drake, that was the example they used. If he's getting 2% of Spotify views, he should get 2% of Spotify revenue or whatever. And uh, Spotify responded by actually um, creating a new proposal that does like what Rashad said. It'll allow you to, they'll like put you on playlists and things that are doing well to try to get you more popular, so not unlike boosting a post on Facebook or whatever, but instead yeah. of you paying outright for it, now they've got their fingers even deeper into what was those royalties, so that if you get, uh, you know, that 3.5 million plays, you won't even get that minimum wage salary. Now, they didn't say exactly what the percentage difference was, how much more it cost, blah, blah, blah. 
but they didn't get into all the details of that. But so Spotify is like trying to do what all the social media platforms are doing and trying to monetize traffic. And they're all they've already done that. But but they're trying to do it even further by now these changes is going to give them the opportunity to promote artists which should have been free. It should have been part of it. And and I want to know what you guys think about this. Well, um I uh <laughs> I, I didn't even really know that you could monetize your music on Spotify. That's how, how far behind I am. I put my stuff up on yeah. SoundCloud until it filled up. And as soon as they said they wanted to charge me for more space, I ported it over, put it all on YouTube with no video. And then yeah. to, to monetize, honestly, what I did was I took my music and put it on my own website. You know, I got that bucket.com. Oh. I mean, I give it away for free, but if I wanted to, instead of charging zero, I could charge a buck a song or something. You know That's what I mean? cool. That's kind of part of the reason why I started that, you know, so that people could kind of monetize their work. Yeah. You know, bucket, bucket, right? Definitely. Founder of bucket.com here with you guys. <laughs> the final point I wanted to make about Spotify is that, you know, while these unions are fighting to try to get more from Spotify, uh <laughs> Spotify continues to fight in court to lower royalty rates for oh songwriters. God. Oh my God! Okay. Wait, what do you think the percent is. What do you think they get? They give you one percent and they take ninety nine or what? It's bad. <laughs> you, you could do the math. You get fifteen grand for three point five million. That's. <laughs> I remember. Yeah, well, get, oh, sorry. What do you think they're making in, in their advertising revenue or whatever? You think they're giving you 1%? It depends no, on how much... Revenue to total payout, right? Mm. Yeah, I don't have those numbers. Yeah. No. Yeah, I think it's a situation where Spotify uh, says that they hardly make any profit um, off um. of music streams. And then, of course, then they have a billionaire who gets created in, what, 10 years or something like that. So that guy's clearly being paid too much, so it's like, but apparently, according to them and their business model, music streams isn't making them the majority of their money. That's why they started doing podcasts and all this other stuff to supplement, apparently. Yeah. Put ads as well. Like anyone can advertise in there, even the creators and uh, artists. And, cool. Yeah. I don't go, I don't go on there enough. <laughs> Spotify. I just I have so many apps on my phone. <laughs> Is that the way independent artists are intending to attempt to monetize their work? Is Spotify? Well, it's it's not know. just Spotify, but think about yeah. it. Think about it. Say you're. Let's pretend you're you're Marco uh, from Nightwish, or or you're Herman Lee, or what whatever you know, rock star you want to freaking put in your mind, funk star, pop star, don't matter, right? You can think about Katy Perry. Right, and she can't go tour. Right, all all of her plans are canceled. Right, she might get to do some TV appearances. You're right. Uh, Marco Haitala was on the she the Masked Singer Finland. Day doing her you know, for uh, Biden, right? She was what? She was did singing. You think yeah, yeah Lady Gaga, right? Yeah, right. yeah she did. Yeah. Both of them. Both of them. They, did yeah, they best. did great. They did great. You know, and I mean, it's a gig, right? I mean, <laughs> uh, some I people are hating on Lady Gaga, right? And I mean, I'm sure she, you know, politics aside, I mean, it's a gig. I'm sure she's hungry and she, you know, she wanted to sing. Like, she's I don't good. Know she made a penny, though. I think that was oh, yeah. pro bono. Oh, sure. Was it? I don't I know bet. what it is. I don't know. Well, Even I think if she that... wasn't paid. Um... Probably it's not. publicity, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we're all amazing, talking though. about her right now, so it's clearly. Yeah, working. she she was amazing. <laughs> she was. <laughs> well, yeah. I think that you know the thing that is, but it's really important to look at with all this stuff. It's like okay, we had a little bit of pile over here on Spotify, and we had a little pile here on YouTube, and and then they're trying to take all that away. But you know what we're not kind of looking at is the direct to fan model, mm -hmm. um, and I've I've seen, I've seen it work. That's you what know, bucket is really, yeah. And I think that's what's a little, how Twitch streamers are making so much money. They're obviously getting the Twitch revenue, but it's only a matter of time before Twitch starts taking a little bit more of that. But people are still donating all day to them. You know, say, hey, that was awesome. Here's five bucks. You know, you have a chat room of 10,000 people. Uh, Trey Anastasio, he did the Beacon Jams one month uh, for the entire month of November. He did a <laughs> live stream from the Beacon Theater, raised like $1.5 million to open a treatment center just off of donations wow. alone. Um, 
direct to fan model. People are like, hey, I love this guy. I love his music. I think he's doing a great thing. I have money to give, so I give it. Very, very direct. Obviously, someone like Trey Anastasio is huge, but um, I think that his team kind of realized that this direct to fan model is the the most realistic option to get to get money. And so that's, you're talking about Patreon, right? Mm -hmm. Patreon is one option. Um, you know, like Twitch, a lot of people Twitch. like if you're streaming on yeah. Twitch, they'll just straight donate. Um, on Bandcamp, you know, we I've yeah. posted just live performances on Bandcamp, radio stations. We'll hop in and say, hey, this is Mike from Boston Jam Radio. Like, here's 10 bucks. Thanks. We're going to air this. I'm like, hell yeah, you're going to play my music and give us money. So you cool. Know? Yeah. Um, awesome. So there's a lot of options. It's, it's, it's all about, like, at least what I'm experiencing is, you know, since I'm trying to work from home and take care of, of my daughter, you know, since she can't physically go to school, I've been trying to find ways to monetize and create little money buckets, right? Like YouTube mm -hmm. is one, right? And I mean, Spotify doesn't get to be its own bucket because I have to go through a distributor, same as you would with the podcast music, right? You have yeah. to go through one of those uh, secondary middlemen corporation to tax mm -hmm. you even more, but that's a topic for another video. <laughs> this, this, is, this, is just, this is just really nuts to me um, because, you know... Yes, I make a, I make a, I make a bucket with YouTube, a bucket with my distributor, a bucket on hopefully uh, eventually on my second YouTube channel. You know, I'm I'm making a bucket on Patreon. You know, you make a ultimately you want to get the super chats going if you're on YouTube if you do the, the live streaming. You yeah. know, all this stuff. There's all these little places you can make money. You know, and you know you kind of have to do a whole bunch of these options together and, and the crowdfunding in order to make yeah. any semblance of a living, you know, uh, unless yeah. maybe you have like literally over a hundred thousand subscribers, you're not going to make enough from the ads. Like I'm, I'm making like, like I made like a uh, 15 bucks my first month and that's it, you know? So yeah. it's like, you can't even collect it till you made a hundred bucks. So, yeah, <laughs> but I think we're getting closer to, uh, you know, like a reasonable solution. I mean, the general idea seems to be, um, really push the idea of uh, donate, you know, like for Patreon and such. And then, you know, take, I guess, your performances and uh, maybe sell them for a buck a song like they would on mm -hmm. iTunes or Bucket yeah. or something, right? Definitely. Yeah. Can you put, cool. does anybody have songs on iTunes? No. Yeah, all, all my distrib my distributor populates to all the platforms. So, like, yeah. when I upload it's 60 too. different things or something you know mm -hmm. that's so awesome. how does that work out i like i said i don't really expect much um from those platforms i'm you know up until recently we we were just focusing on making money at shows you know working out deals with venues and just being like hey we'll come play music here for 200 bucks 300 bucks whatever so it changed now to donate and then uh sell online directly there's not much we can do about it because like nobody can get out of the house so the only options are the online resources to do anything related to like trying to get something out of music and trying to get paid to do it so you know yeah I'm really interested to in getting to part three here. Where we're going to talk about another very important policy to musicians, which is copyright on YouTube. Uh, just to give you guys a little bit of a preview of what part three is going to be about. Um, I received a faulty copyright claim, and I'm going to give you guys the rundown about how it all happened and, um, you know, just how absolutely ridiculous and absurd it is. Um, Jennifer probably knows what I'm talking about because I already told I her. But um, yeah. hang in there, and I hope you guys all tune in for part three. Remember, make sure you check out all these guys and the links I'm going to have in the description. We're going to have Rashad's Instagram. You can check him out. Uh, hopefully, he'll put some links to his music so you can check him out. Sarah's got some music links and YouTube. Jennifer also has YouTube. And Eric, you can check him out and maybe find out about his book. And, you know, he has a YouTube channel as well with some music and cool stuff. Make sure you guys subscribe to Matthew's Music Lesson Studio. Like this video. Please share. And I'll see you guys next time on Mastering Music with Matthew. All right. <laughs>